Wow, it is forest fire season. You can see the sun there through the smoke. There isn't a cloud in the sky. Yuck. Yuck, yuck. Hey everybody, welcome back. And this is part three of uh, me doing body work and paint on the 68 Chevelle that I rescued. Uh, you could check out that video. Plus I've got a couple other videos of me working on this but the last one i dropped was two months ago and you know it is a summertime i work full time plus i uh, was over at aaron's place check out a couple of his videos we got a 67 firebird of his running up good and he had a 36 divco bread truck with a ford v8 swapped in that we got going and drove around it was quite a bit of fun plus we put a posi track into a cecil 66 chevelle project which hopefully you'll be seeing more of but uh, anyway i did get a bunch done on this so let's see what i did Alright, I think in the last video I was just roughing in this new uh, tail panel. I've got this in. It's all spot welded up. It's spot welded all across the bottom, up from below, which I don't recommend. I'm still healing up from that. And I got the uh, trunk latch in. It's connected up here in this, you know, this, this thing here. I still got to do a little bit of work here. I got a little bit of filler to do here and a couple other holes I had to drill, drill out to get the old one out but it is it was basically lined up and in and this spent this took me a long time and I am glad it's over I've got I still have to seam seal it and uh you know paint it up seal it up so it doesn't rust but I'll be spending a lot of time on that uh, it's nice to have that and I'm not sure if I talked about this in the last video or not, but these were, it had a vinyl top and this is where the trim was. And when you pull it all off and grind it out, you end up with these little holes. So I welded those up and then flat disc them back down and they'll need some, uh, some filler and that'll go on the metal works down. The major event was right, right here. This was all cut out and I uh, made a new panel that went here and I uh, put some dimple dies in there for strength. I had to weld up up on the inside, I don't know if you can see that, but I ended up putting a flat piece of metal over everything. I cleaned up all the rust off that I could find and just kind of patched it up. And here I was able to reuse this piece and weld it back on. In the channel, I, uh, I was able to bend and put in there and then same on this corner. I actually had to make this out of two pieces that had to weld together. We'll need a little bit of filler there, but I am happy with how it turned out. Um, I think if I had to do it all over again, the patch panel I've made, I would have tried to put, um, I just butt welded it together and I would have wanted to put a, like a lip on there and that would help disperse the heat a little bit because welding this, I had, to, I had to turn my welder way down to make it work right. And I am getting this done. I still got a little bit of work as you can see, but that was rust all the way through. So I cut it out. I was putting that piece in and I ran out of gas for my welder, so I called it a day, but I've got a little bit of work here to do and some filling work, and then that will get taken care of. On the front fender, let me get up here, it's been out of the way. I got, I can't remember how much I talked about, but I got the patches laid in here. I was able to smooth out the dent that was here. This is ready for a guide coat to see how much work I got to do. I welded in these holes. This is where the original Malibu, uh, what was that, like a, you know, like a chrome piece Malibu went there. And I'm not putting that back on. And then down here, I smoothed out this. This is, had an old patch panel cut in there. And I smoothed that out and did my best to line that up. This is in a little bit, but I don't want to line the door to the fender until I get the, the molding back on the door and the seal because that will affect how it, how it goes. But this fender is pretty much ready for guide coat and any filler that I need. This door is in pretty good shape. I do have a little bit of rust bubbling up on this other quarter panel. I'll uh, grind that down and make sure I don't have to do anything in there. I might have to do a little bit, but it's nothing like the other side. I needed a bunch of work. And I am down to, I need to finish welding this up and patching that, get it ready for filler. And then this door, this front piece is, is messed up. I don't know if it got punched, like something was shoved in there and the door was shut on it. 
but somebody's already attempted to uh, smooth it out pretty good and it's not too far off. I think I'm gonna, maybe that's, I think that's what that hole is for. They drilled it in and used it to pull out. I'll have to punch down in a little bit and see if I could pry this up a little bit so I'm not using as much filler. And then, I've got these holes in the windshield that I'm gonna have to go after. So once I get that done, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull that glass out. And I did order um, some new tabs. I got two or I can't remember, three more trim tabs. When they come in, they, they kind of screw in there and I'll show that. I'm thinking of um, putting a rust inhibitor all back behind there where there's still some surface rust, sealing all this up and actually setting the back window into the car and sealing it up. And that way it's just, you know, I can mask and get around it, but I just won't have this big hole back there for when I'm trying to keep dust out of the car. And so I kind of messed up because I should, before I ever started, I should have took this out to the driveway and washed it and put wax degreaser on it and just gotten all that stuff off um, because you don't want to sand it. Cause when you sand, you can actually push that deeper into the paint, which is something uh, I had to learn. I didn't know that. And so that's no reason why I want to put in the back windows. Maybe I can take it out before I pull out the front windshield and really get that off the roof and the rest of the car before I do any more sanding on it. It's a smoky here. They got forest fire season and I showed you a little, little bit of video of what's going on outside, but I had to crack the uh, front and rear door because I was doing a bunch of welding and grinding and this place filled up with flies. So I'm about to call it a day. But anyway, I've got this patch done and I'll show you what else I've been up to. I got back down with the uh, tire back on, but I just welded in the patch, uh, ground her down, did some flap disking. I'm pretty happy, you know, feels real smooth all the way around. It's going to take a little bit of filler, but I kind of indented it just a little bit for that reason. And then I started taking a look at the uh, issue with the door up here. I don't know what happened, like, like something got stuck in there and then they shut the door on it and it popped it out. They kind of started hammering it back in, went too far, started pulling it out. I don't know. But if you look at the metal, it actually kind of goes up and then back down. So that's got to get tapped back down more in alignment in the fender, which is off anyway. I mean, the whole door is off a little bit, but I can still get it pretty close. And then I've got a, an indent here, and I just want to put that much filler into it, maybe, maybe even a little bit here. And so I'm borrowing, a, I don't know what's called, but it's a tool that welds on a little piece of metal and then you can put a slide hammer on it and you can pop that dent back out. And that is also going to be used over here where I got the same thing. That got dented down and there's double metal in the trunk. And so I'm not able to get up under there and pop it out, but I don't know what happened here, but I should be able to weld that same thing there, pop it up and get less filler on it. And then it's off to the windshield. This area is really not that great. You know, the windshield's cracked. I'm going to be popping that whole thing out anyway. So I'm thinking I might uh, actually start cutting it out. I know years ago it was leaking, so that's this RTV up there. But uh, that's coming out, and I'm really hoping that the dash rust just stops there, you know, just in the cowl. I can cut that out and patch it, but if it travels up and gets in there, according to the internet, the best thing to do is just replace the entire dash metal assembly, which I really would rather not do. So I'm hoping for the best on that, but I think I will probably pop this windshield out now since I can't get to the other tool. Um, I'm actually borrowing that from Cecil, and I'm going up to Cecil's place tomorrow because we're going to uh, put more time on his 66 Chevelle build. If you haven't seen those videos, go check them out. We just put a posi in his 12 volt rear end. We got his engine back in, a bunch of front sheet metal on, and we're going to hit it hard for another day. And really would like to see that thing running and driving. Plus, he's got pretty much a whole interior to put in it. But I will get going again.
All right, I got the windshield out. I did some cleaning up and um, vacuuming. Let's see how bad the damage is. Well, it could have been worse. It's really not horrible, I guess. So I got, oh, you guys can see that. So I got a rust hole right there up on the dash side. And I've got another one down on the other end. Other than that, most of the rust is, is down on this cap. Kind of see these holes here. This lip here is part of the whole dash. This lip here is part of the whole dash. And so these holes here, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to cut out and put in a piece of metal and, and fix it. And I gotta go see how far down it goes because that actually, actually goes down inside the car. Um, the rest of it like this, I can grind out and weld up. And the rest of the hole seem to be down into the cowl area, so I can cut this lip off, patch and fix this, and, and weld. I can even do double metal and you know, spot weld it in, which is how it's done from the factory. I've got a little bit of a rust hole here. I think I can just cut that out, clean that up, take care of it. Other than that, this is all, this is all good. There's nothing up here in the windshield channel that, if anything, that's all in great shape. A lot of this is in great shape and doesn't need to be touched. The rust is right down below it, so I'm, I still might have to at least separate and bend this up so I can patch and fix that. It's definitely coming up from the cowl in the rest of the areas, but it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I think I'll uh, be okay. So I'm kind of happy. The rust didn't turn out as bad as I thought it was going to be on the windshield. I got a little bit of work to do, but I think what I'll do is I'll probably pop this hood off and set it, you know, I throw down like a horse blanket. I'll throw the hood up on the roof and then I can really get in there and uh, do some better cutting and welding. But I think I'm done for today. I'm going to go up to Cecil's tomorrow. We're going to work on his Chevelle. That's who I'm borrowing the uh, welder polar denter thing from. And once I get that done, I'm going to move to body filler and start smoothing everything out. And I still got to get the wax and everything cleaned off of it. But it is nasty out there and smoky. So today ain't going to happen. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And we got more coming. And maybe someday you'll see this actually get painted. Anyway, take care. See you next time.